Now, what's so special about this Q1? Other textbooks or other economists might replace this with Q star and P star to denote that it's the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price. Well, what's so special about Q star is that at, so at uh, P star, the quantity demanded is exactly equal to the quantity supplied. We should never forget that the demand curve represents people. It represents people who wish to purchase or acquire health care. After all, these are people that we care about as people. But we should also remember that the supply curve represents people too. These are people who have to provide the health care. And they have other things that they wish to do too, including, for example, being with family, being with friends, and everything else that goes with living life. So what we want to do is we want to have enough health care for everyone to have as much as they need, but also have doctors and everyone else have time to spend with their families, friends, and other loved ones. And so what we want to do is we want to ensure that the amount of health care desired <clears throat> is equal to the amount provided. So the easiest way to understand this statement here is to think about the opposite and why that would not be desirable. So let's start with an example where there is not enough health care to go around. This would clearly be bad because there would be people who would want to buy health care and who would be able to buy health care, unable to get the health care that they want. In other words, there wouldn't be enough doctors for these people to actually go and see. That's clearly a not good outcome. We would want there to be enough doctors for everyone who needs them to be able to see them. But what about the opposite? Wouldn't it make sense to have more doctors than we need? After all, doesn't this pandemic show us that it's better to have too much medical care than not enough? Hardly. The idea here is to say that we want to have the right amount of health care, not too little health care provided, but not too much. Why not too much? Well, here's kind of the thing. Being a doctor is a very special skill that very few people can actually go through medical school and accomplish. We don't want too many people to do that, because if too many people did, that would mean that there were too few people doing other things. We want everyone to be productive. We don't want people sitting on the sidelines, twiddling their thumbs, hoping that a patient comes in. That would be a little bit strange. Instead, what we want is to have doctors not be idle all day. That would be a waste of time. Instead of being an idle doctor, they could go out and be a productive anything else. Perhaps they could go into construction and help build homes so that people have more houses. Perhaps they could go into farming and help grow food so that people have access to food. Or perhaps they could be teachers so that people have better access to education. The point here is that if we have too many doctors, that means we have not enough of some other thing. And in a society that has scarcity, which all societies do, we must pick and choose what it is that people are going to do so that we actually have enough of all other things. Too much of one thing means not enough of something else. And oftentimes, that something else is very valuable.